What's up guys, it's Sun Min and welcome back to Your Money Game, the show where we get better with saving, spending and investing. But today we're doing part 2 of cybersecurity and how to stay secure with your digital finances. So last week, I started this series to satisfy my own curiosity to just how safe are the financial services and devices that we use. So when you boil it down, it's actually our software or our own behavior that's really putting us at risk. So in this video, I'll quickly cover some of those software updates that we need to make on our own mindset and then focus on the steps that we need to take to secure our digital finances. So let's get going. So we're all human here and unfortunately because of that, we have certain behavioral vulnerabilities that we just can't really avoid. We can only try and reduce the effects. The first one is our nature to react instinctively to emotions such as fear, greed and excitement. What? Boss needs those login details now? Whoa! Free Bitcoin giveaway and I only need to send him money to get it? And it's for a limited time? What? My embarrassing pictures from university were released? Oh my god! The next human nature is our tendency to really trust authority. Hi, sorry, yep. Uh, you're from the Ministry of Health? And I need to send you my bank details so that you can perform contact tracing? Sure. And our final nature is that we tend to be overconfident and we feel that these type of things tend to happen to other people and just not us. Oh yeah, that kind of stuff, only idiots will fall for it. Or you might be thinking to yourself that, hey, I'm in a Starbucks, Wi-Fi here is good, it's free. So let me log into my bank account right here. Let me make a brokerage transaction and then maybe I'll let me do my Bitcoin transactions here as well. So all of those things really lead us down some risky behavior that really just exposes us to risks that we might not need to take. So the three software updates that we need to make on ourselves are fairly simple. The first one is be skeptical of anything that is sensational. So watch that emotion that you're feeling and if you feel that urgency to need to act right now, try and calm yourself down before you do anything. The second is always trust but verify. Even if it sounds like it's from an authority figure or something that's really legit, if it just smells slightly fishy, if you feel that small sense of doubt, say fine, I'm gonna check and make sure that it's really legit. And finally, when it comes to financial transactions, treat home like home base. Try to minimize any unnecessary transactions or actions online when you're out of home. So now that we're done with the mindset updates, I'm gonna walk you through some steps that you can take in a simple afternoon to upgrade your security almost for life. Ideally, you set aside a couple of hours to do this and you can do it over the weekend or maybe an evening. And if you could, set aside a couple of seconds to click on that like and subscribe button to please the gods of YouTube because it really helps my channel out. So let's start with step one, which is cleansing. And what you're doing is trying to remove any form of malware or virus that might be lurking around in your devices. So sit down with a cup of coffee with all your devices in front of you and download the right kind of software. So for my laptop, I've been using the free version of Avast for a while now and so far it's been doing good. And on top of that, what I like is the real-time web protection feature that it has. For my mobile phone, I've been using Bitdefender. Again, it's a free version which already has scanning features as well as always on protection. I'll attach a link below so you can browse some of the other options that you might be interested in. In the unfortunate event that you detected something really nasty and you have trouble removing it, I'm not a doctor, so you're gonna have to Google up the right solution, but ideally get your stuff clean before you move on. So once your devices are clean, it's time to get cracking on the second major step, which is updating. So start by opening up the sites or the apps of the digital services that you use. And these are the really important ones. It can be your email, your social, your bank, your brokerage, and then it's time to update your passwords if you've not updated them in a long time. What you can consider is using password phrasing instead of your regular passwords, such as common ones like password1 or username. When you use phrases, you can get really creative to help you memorize it. For example, I heart fried chicken for life. Ideally, your passwords shouldn't contain any publicly known information, especially stuff which you kind of posted in a social profile before. So like anybody living on the web today, you're gonna have a million passwords to remember, which is why I try not to remember every single one of them. What I use is a password service 
and you can use a one password or even last pass. Please don't store your passwords on a note-taking app somewhere in your computer. You might be thinking to yourself that I'm afraid of losing that one password which would jeopardize the rest of my passwords. But here's my rationale of why I still prefer using a password manager. If you were trying to memorize each individual site's password, you will have the tendency to want to keep those passwords really simple so you can kind of remember it, right? As a result, those passwords might not be as strong as you should be making them. So once you have those passwords updated and stored securely in one of those services, you need to ensure that you have a two-factor authentication enabled. So 2FA is basically an additional step of verifying that you are who you are above and beyond the password that has been keyed in. And it's usually done through a couple of ways. And the first is SMS, and the second is through an Authenticator app. I personally use Google Authenticator and it's been working fine for me. And if you had an option of choosing between an SMS authentication or using an Authenticator app, the consensus seems to be trust the app. And the reason is there have been scams called SIM swaps where somebody pretends that your SIM has been lost and they request for a replacement SIM card. So if somebody already cracked your password and then they had access to your SIM and number, they'll be able to capture your SMS verification codes. Both 1Password as well as LastPass have 2FA and I would encourage you that after this, enable 2FA on all the services that you currently have. Specifically for Facebook and Google, here's how you find the 2FA feature and turn it on. The final thing to update is your social login access. So again, if you're like me, you've used some kind of Facebook login or Google login across many different services across the web. This is just really good housekeeping to ensure that any of the old services that you're not really using actively are de-linked from your social accounts. So with FB and Google, here's how you find it. So the cleansing and update, I consider as two essential steps that you must do. Now we're going to the final step, which is upgrading. And I don't think it's absolutely necessary, but I do think it's a really strong recommendation. Firstly, download and register a Find My Device on Android or Find My iPhone on iOS for all your digital devices. The reason is that if you lose it, yes, it helps you track it down. But more importantly, if it contains sensitive data, you can initiate a remote wipe. That way, it enables a factory reset of the phone from a remote location. Next, consider segregating your email accounts as well as your services. And odds are you're using one email account for all the different services that you use right now. What you want to do is get at least two email accounts running. And the first is a public email account. And the second is a private email account that nobody else knows about. If you wanted to, you can be even more secure by creating multiple email accounts for multiple services that you use. You might end up with bank accounts like John Social, John Banking, John Brokerage, John whatever. Personally, I use a combination of Gmail and ProtonMail for this part of the process. ProtonMail is a very interesting service that's a privacy-first email service. Plus, they've got a free version of 500 megabytes, which makes it a perfect email account for you to store kind of very simple information. Next is for you to set up a panic list. And this is really just a simple list of emergency numbers and procedures to take in the event that something goes wrong. And this step is really just to reduce the fear and anxiety you have in the event that something does go wrong and you're in this mode of panic and you're trying to scramble and look for what do I do right now? A final consideration that you can have is to subscribe to a paid VPN service that ensures your data goes through an additional layer of security. Whew, that list might sound really long, but you know what? If you've got through all that, you are already miles ahead of the average person when it comes to securing your digital data and financial life. But when it comes to protecting your money, I think it's worth the extra effort to ensure that you're starting on a secure base as you continue to build wealth over time. With that said, I hope you guys found this useful. And if you did, I would really appreciate you hitting that like, subscribe, as well as that bell button. And I'm going to be back again next Sunday with a brand new series. So thanks again, take care, and keep playing your own game.